Hi there and welcome to Little Garden on the Prairies and welcome to fall. It is an absolutely beautiful day here on the Saskatchewan Prairies and I have just put together another garden bed here. This is an 11 inch size grow box garden bed. So in this video I'm going to show you how I'm going to fill up the garden box here getting it ready to transplant some strawberries and then a few weeks away from now before the ground freezes we're also going to put in some garlic bulbs. So let's get started. So before you start filling up your garden bed you want to make sure that you have placed it where you want it to be because you don't want to have to move it later. So have a look around your garden and make sure that it is going in a spot that is going to get a lot of sunlight. So this is the east here where the sun will rise in the morning and I will get a lot of good sunlight here all day long as the sun moves to the south all the way over to the west. These two garden beds up front where I have a lot of my vegetables, tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, get lots of sunlight and I think this will also benefit from many hours of sunlight. So. Like I said, just make sure you got it where you want it before you start filling it. So now that I have my garden bed sitting where I want to, we are ready to start with the first layer. So laying down a real thick layer of cardboard is the best way to suppress weeds and it will break down slowly over a couple years and work its way into the ground. It's a great organic method to use and I've always been using cardboard underneath my garden beds and it's worked well for me. I was lucky to have a very large box come my way. We just purchased something that came in a very large box. So I got some really big pieces of cardboard. So I'm just gonna start off by spreading them out in the area. You wanna watch for holes in the cardboard because those weeds and the quack grass will find their way if they can through any little hole that you leave. So putting a good thick layer of cardboard is a good idea for the first layer. You could also use newspaper or shredded paper as part of your base layer per if you have access to, you know, bags of shredded paper from the office or big piles of newspaper. Those will work well as the base layer. I do leave quite a bit of um, overhang underneath. Just leave that for now just so that there's no uh, outside cracks around that uh, grass can sneak into your garden beds from and over time that will break down or I will cover it up in the spring with grass clippings or wood chips just to make it look better. So now that I have filled it with enough cardboard we are ready to wet it down before adding the next layer. So again, you can have a look at it, make sure that it is centered and straight and in the spot you want to. You still have a chance to, to move it around if you want to. And then I'm gonna just soak it down really well with water just to kind of break down that cardboard a little bit and suppress it into the ground. You don't want too much air in your layers when you're putting this together because it will sink over time. So just giving it a really good soaking will help kind of compress that cardboard right off the bat. So for the next layer, this is a really good filler that most people should have access to and that is leaves and grass clippings. What I've done here is I've used my mower that has a bagger mulcher on it and I just mow around hedges and bushes where there's a lot of leaves trapped from last year so they have been sitting there for a year which is great and with the mulcher on my mower it kind of chops up those leaves a little bit and helps them break down even more faster so I am going to put as much as I can find here into the garden bed and that will add a couple inches of good organic material that will also break down slowly adding nutrients to the soil. So this batch of leaves and grass clippings that I just added got rained on the other day so they are really good and wet already. I'm going to spread them around and just kind of tamp them down a little bit try to remove as much air out of the uh, leaves that you can. We'll give it another good watering with the garden hose just to compact it a little bit better and get lots of moisture in there. So 
So now that we have a good weed barrier underneath, a good layer of mulch, we are ready to add in the soil. So I'm just using my Hori Hori knife just to check the measurement. As I mentioned at the beginning, this garden bed is 11 inches deep. We want about four to six inches of good growing soil for our garlic and our strawberries. And we are right at that point right now where we have about six inches of space left. So this will be a good time to mix up some good soil and add it into our garden bed. So this is when things can get a little more costly and sometimes it's hard to find good soil. You don't want to have to spend a lot of money on bag soil. What I've done here is I found some old potting soil from the spring that I never used up in some of my garden containers. So I'm just dumping that in to start with. It has a little bit of, you know, nutrients and peat moss in it. And then I've got access to some aged manure that my husband brought to me. So that is great to have. So if you can get a hold of something like that, or some tubs of compost, that is the best thing to start with. So I'm gonna just be mixing that with vermiculite, about three, three quarters soil to one quarter vermiculite is the measurement that I would use just to add a little bit of aeration to that soil. The vermiculite helps hold moisture, helps put a little bit of air into the soil so it's not too heavy. So then you are ready to start filling your garden bed with this soil mixture. My wagon didn't work very well for dumping uh, a wheelbarrow. Probably be good if you're pre-mixing it in something before you dump it in. For my second batch of the soil mixture, I just shoveled the uh, aged manure right into the garden bed and then dumped in the vermiculite and mixed it right into the garden bed. That way it was a lot quicker and a little less work. Seemed to work out okay. So I have just done one section of the garden bed and we are ready to go and get the strawberries and transplant them into the garden bed. So I have two strawberry plants here that I grew all summer in these black 30 gallon tubs. They did really good. I had lots of strawberries coming all summer long and I still have a couple ripening up here. As you can see I've had um, quite a battle though. I've had chipmunks get into my strawberries before me and then at the end of August we just got infested with wasps. It was a really big thing here on the prairies where wasps were just swarming everything. I'm not sure what the reason was but they just totally took over these strawberries, sucked every ounce of juice out of every ripe one that they could find. So I'm going to try digging these up and transplanting them into my new garden bed. And hopefully they will get established a little bit this fall. I'll be mulching them very well just to give them a good coating of insulation. And hopefully come spring they will have survived our cold winters and they will have a new home that they can grow in. So I think I'm going to cut off a lot of these uh, dead leaves and some of the green stuff. Just chop it right down. Don't need any of this on here. And just looking for if there's any runners coming off of this one. To see if there's something that we can just stick into another part of the ground here. Let it take off such as that one there. I probably should have been paying attention, but you see there'll be some roots coming out of here. So I'm just gonna stick it in the dirt anyway. It might catch and uh, root and hopefully maybe get going before the winter. Make a space for it here. I have some worm castings. Put some of these worm castings in the soil so they have a good start in the spring. So when you're planting strawberries, you don't want to put them too deep. You kind of want the level of the dirt to be just at the top, what they call the crown. You don't want to bury that too deep. Kind of want it right at the surface. So we're just going to work the dirt around it here. Press it in. So this is the first time I've tried to transplant strawberries in the fall. I'm not sure if I'm following all the correct rules, but I thought we would just give it a try here and see. We got a, probably another good month here of decent warm weather, probably starting to get freezing temperatures at night here in the next couple weeks. But hoping these strawberries will catch and uh, 
go to sleep for the winter and hopefully come back in the spring. So I've also taken some of these strawberries indoors about a month ago and took a bunch of these runners. I've got them rooting in water. Gonna be growing them hydroponically in my grow tent this winter. So please stay tuned for those videos coming. I'll be taking a few other items from my outdoor garden and setting them up in hydroponics in my basement for the winter. So if you're interested in learning how to keep growing all winter long, even though the it gets cold here on the prairies, I can keep growing food all year round. So we have got half of the garden bed filled and about a third of it planted up with some strawberries here. I found a few little suckers. So I think we got the two main plants and then about three or four suckers planted. So hopefully these will catch. I didn't get it all filled tonight. I ran out of steam. I just wanted to be able to share this video with you tonight on transplanting strawberries. And we will have a part two video coming up in a few weeks when it is time to get the garlic in the ground. And I just wanted to show you these crazy, crazy big garlic bulbs. So these are two of the biggest garlic bulbs that I harvested from my garden this year. And these are the garlic bulbs that I received from Jordan at Mind and Soil. If you haven't checked out his channel, he's got a great channel and he was selling these huge garlic bulbs. So I'm gonna be planting up some of these, some of mine, and we're gonna compare next year to see what kind of uh, garlic crop we get out of it. So it's gonna be kind of a fun experiment. I will be doing a video on it in the coming weeks. So stay tuned for that. So I'm gonna leave a link below to my little garden newsletter. So please, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to that newsletter. All sorts of great information gets posted on my newsletter. I have some very exciting things in the works for my winter growing season. So I hope that you will subscribe to that newsletter and stay informed. And as always, hit that like button, leave me a comment. Don't forget to subscribe and we will see you on the next video.